Before Valentino Rossi had committed to 2021 being his final season, his incumbent retirement instigated the thought of alternative realities that could have materialized over the last decade based on Rossi's decisions. In other words, if VR46 didn't decide to keep racing until 2021, even past his prime, what would have been the chain reaction of events to occur in the MotoGP class if he decided to hang up the boots several years ago? That question, ladies and gentlemen, leads us to examining what's known as the butterfly effect. But before we do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you're intrigued, and subscribe to the channel if you want to explore more of these what-if topics in the motorcycle world. So you might be asking yourself, what is the butterfly effect? Well, as the internet puts it, the sensitive dependence on initial conditions in which a seemingly small, insignificant change in one state of a system can result in a large variation of that system in a later state. In English terms, one small change in time can have a ripple effect of changes over time that lead to one larger alternate reality of the present. So in our particular case, every recent contract cycle offered Valentino Rossi a chance to walk away, and every time Rossi has found it in him to continue. And although Rossi hasn't been MotoGP's rider to beat for the vast majority of the past decade, there is simply no questioning that the series has continued to revolve around him even as he stopped winning titles. So what if he did indeed take one of those opportunities to walk away? That decision could have been the small change in time that would have instigated the butterfly effect, leading to other riders suiting up for different teams on different bikes, possibly leading to alternate outcomes on their careers, and could have changed the entire MotoGP landscape as we know it today. The first case on our list occurs in 2012, and it's no secret that Casey Stoner's love of going fast on MotoGP bikes was counterbalanced by his absolute hatred of all the other roles that comes from being a world champion, like media interviews and shaking hands. That all came to a head at the end of 2012 season, when he dramatically announced his retirement while still the reigning world champion and walked away from the sport. But imagine a circumstance where instead of Stoner announcing his retirement, it was his bitter and personal rival Rossi. Had Rossi elected to leave and Stoner to stay, it would probably have created a Repsol Honda dream team that could have conquered the world. Danny Pedro Rosa would have been booted out, obviously, replaced instead by hotshot young talent Mark Marquez, and watching him and Stoner battle each other on equal machinery would have been a sight to see. And who knows, maybe Marquez doesn't win six world titles because Casey Stoner is there to steal a couple away from him, ironically, on the same bike. It also would potentially have opened the door for Pedroza, not Rossi, to replace Ben Spies at the factory Yamaha team too. A fascinating opportunity to see Pedroza at the height of his game on a bike many always believed would be far more suited to him than a Honda, meaning Pedroza possibly could have won a world title like many expected of him during his career. Alternatively, would Spies himself have stayed in Yamaha instead of making a disastrous injury-riddled move to Pramac Ducati that prematurely ended his career? It's curious to think how his role would have played out. Three different alternate realities squashed because one Valentino Rossi chose not to retire. Two years later, in 2014, questions of Rossi's retirement surfaced again, and his decision again would have created a butterfly effect throughout the paddock. The most obvious option to replace Rossi would have been Paul Espargaro, the top Yamaha satellite rider the previous season at Tech 3. Had he found his way onto a factory bike there, he would have remained a surefire option until at least Fabio Cartararo came along in 2021 potentially shaking up not only Yamaha's plans, but also having a huge impact on KTM's then-unfounded MotoGP ambitions, who ended up signing Espargaro three years later in 2017. Of course, there's always the Cal Crutchlow option, then a Ducati rider but deeply unhappy on the Desmos Adici, and in the end seeing out only one year of his contract before departing for LCR Honda. Many wonder whether Crutchlow would have achieved the same success at Yamaha he did at Honda, where he took three wins. But for Espargaro, it's likely that he wouldn't have been sitting here several years later, still without a Premier Class victory to his name. Again, one small change in decision from Rossi could have altered the fates of two other riders. Similar to Stoner four years previously, Jorge Lorenzo is another rider whose entire career trajectory could have potentially been altered by removing the black hole that is Valentino Rossi. Would Lorenzo have dramatically walked away from Yamaha to join Ducati had he known that he'd be the top rider at the team the following year? We'll never know, but it's unlikely. And had he stayed with Yamaha, it's hard to imagine Lorenzo not fighting for the championship, or at least not putting on a better show than he did at Ducati than at Honda. Who would have joined him? Probably still Maverick Vinales in reality. Should Ducati still have managed to lure Lorenzo away though, it could have given Pedroza yet another path out of orange and into blue as the most likely candidate to have been on the Yamaha shopping list at the time. That would have in turn promoted Crutchlow into the Repsol Honda team alongside Marquez, a role the Brit arguably should have also received four years later in 2020 instead of Marquez's up-and-coming brother Alex. Once again, three different riders' futures altered by one decision from the doctor. 
Another case of Rossi retirement questions came in 2018, where the exact dominoes here depend a fair amount on the timing of Rossi's decision, but assuming it came early enough, there was an ideal successor in place by the name of Johan Zarco, who was a standout on the Tech 3 run Yamaha, and at most manufacturers, that would have logically transitioned into a place in the factory Yamaha lineup. From there, he may have succeeded or he may have failed, we'll never know, but we all know it wouldn't have gone as badly as his move to KTM where Zarco was so bad it nearly ended his Premier Class career. But because Yamaha's 2019-2020 factory three-team roster was confirmed as early as March 2018, with Vinales and Rossi in place, Zarco's time on the M1 was effectively over. But if he had held off on committing to KTM and had Rossi retired, Zarco wouldn't have signed with KTM because of Rossi's factory spot to fill at Yamaha. Therefore, KTM probably would have turned its gaze towards the Ducati contracted Jack Miller, who actually turned down a KTM offer after Zarco's 2019 exit, as KTM was a less attractive destination at the time. So who's to say he would have said yes to the Austrian manufacturer the year before, had Zarco moved up to the factory? seat at Yamaha. Perhaps KTM would have just stuck Miguel Oliveira on the factory bike instead of the Tech 3 one and placed Brad Bender on the satellite team instead. Finally, to round out the list, the last case of Rossi retirement questions came in 2020. Although the least consequential on this list, and for obvious reasons, either way he still would have ceded the Yamaha factory ride to Quartararo. Yamaha's decision to promote Quartararo came before there was total certainty Rossi would continue, so there's no real cause to believe his retirement would impact that in any way. But one deal that is surely would impact is that of Quartararo's ex-teammate and Rossi's protege Franco Morbidelli. He would have still been a Patronus SRT Yamaha rider, sure, but logic dictates he would have had the work spec machinery Rossi rode in 2021, as opposed to the older spec M1 Morbidelli is running now. That seems like a small distinction in the grand scheme of things, but it could yet evolve to be much more pivotal. Morbidelli, after all, is a proven MotoGP winner and was Yamaha's top rider in 2020, and a difference in spec could well be the tipping point that decides whether Yamaha gets to hang on to him longer term or not. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's a lot of what ifs, but all of these alternative realities lead back to one individual and his one decision on retirement that if gone the other way at a particular moment in time would have produced the ripple effects down the paddock to realize a greater change in the present day MotoGP, in essence completing the butterfly effect. And as many know, it is often said that Rossi is Mr. MotoGP and that his influence on the sport is unlike any other riders in history. And although that statement generally refers to Rossi's impact on the popularity of the sport, I think one can also see that his influence goes much further beyond that. The futures of several riders over the past decade have been directly influenced by the decision of one man at a particular moment in time that essentially dictated their own futures. That, we can say, has never been seen before. So with all that in mind, what has been a decision or event in your life that could have altered the reality you live in today? Think about all the ripple effects that change in time would have had on events in your life. Think about it and share your story in the comments below. Because just like a butterfly, we too will awaken in our own time. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you have stuck around this long, hit that like button, drop a comment, and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Until next time, this is Moto Misha, checking out. Peace.